Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Katherine Moore. And thank you for joining me on my podcast, Social Work Rise. So I have been wanting to start a podcast for a while, and some people may wonder why. There's a lot of reasons why, actually. Um, First, I want to do particularly social work podcasts because I freaking love social workers, the social work profession everything that is social work. I just love it. I love it. I cannot get enough. On top of that, social workers are literally the nicest people I've ever met. So any 99% of the social workers I've met, they're just complete sweethearts. They're so, so nice and so generous. And they need to know their worth. A lot of times I've seen social workers and they're so extremely nice. They're just like, oh, well, you know, they're just so modest, like to a fault. Like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. I'm just, I'm just here to help people. And, and they're very sweet, but I do want to make sure that social workers, that we really understand our worth, that we have an extremely rare set of knowledge and skills and we need to take credit for that. We need to really own it. Additionally, social workers are almost like an underserved group or or an underserved population. Now don't get mad at me because I know there's a lot of underserved populations, but hear me out. I just saw, it was probably like two weeks ago or so, a article written by a social worker talking about President Trump's, uh, like, re, what did he do? He reduced the SNAP benefits. And this article was talking about how it doesn't just affect her clients, but also herself. She's working, she's a social worker, and she also needs SNAP benefits. And this is just... I'm, it just doesn't sit well with me. I'm just not okay. I I feel that social workers are vastly undervalued and underpaid. And I'm not okay with this. I know I heard this like many, many times. Oh, okay. Well, and during your social work career, you're just going to be undervalued and people aren't going to know your worth. And you're just going to kind of have to be okay with that. No, no. I'm not okay with it. That is not okay. I did not go to school and focus on social work for five years because I did the three-year master program and my two years undergraduate for my BSW. I didn't, and, and now I'm licensed. I did not go through all of this and spend all of this money, all of this time, all of my blood, sweat, and tears to be undervalued and underpaid. I am not okay with that. Yes, I want to help people and I believe in being generous. However, I also know that I need to help my family and I need to provide for my daughter. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to take some time away and de-stress, which is another reason why I started the podcast because social workers need more emotional support. We see and hear a lot of trauma from the people that we work with, and we need a support system, a very large support system 
to be able to help us process this, to help us unwind, to have fun. I'm in Southern California and there is not very many social work resources for these things in my area. I have to reach out to my own friends that I meet during work or that I knew during grad school, but it would be really awesome to get together with new people who maybe do the same kind of work that I do, do different work. Maybe I want to get into a different type of field and it just helps to know people from all walks of life. So just more emotional support. I want to have an in a space where we can bring social work workers together and just talk about the things that are on my mind, on our minds, and what we're doing about it. Additionally, I want to be able to teach you some new skills, have some new skills in the toolbox, because the world is a changing, my friends. It's changing fast, and we need to be learning new skills to keep up and to be competent in our jobs and not just competent, but the best social workers that we can possibly be because that's what our clients deserve. They don't deserve some half-assed social worker who doesn't even like their job, who is burnt out, who's kind of like, okay, I was crying on my way to work because I'm so burnt out. I'm sick. I can't afford to take some vacation time off. Let me just just go and do this and smile through this assessment. No, no. People can feel that. That's not okay. If we're burnt out, we need to be able to acknowledge it. And we need to have the resources to take the time that we need to, de- to just de-stress and to be the best social worker and the best person that we can possibly be. Again, I didn't go to school for five years and go through all the licensing, everything, you know, everything involved with licensing just to barely be making it and to barely be surviving and to not even be happy in my work. That's just not okay. I'm not okay with that. So I hope that this podcast will inspire you, motivate you, give you some extra, some extra oomph and bring value to your work and and to your lives. Because ultimately, you all are the nicest people ever, like the most generous population of people I've ever met. And I believe also that we are the most undertapped resource for social change that there is. If we are able to empower social workers who literally went to school to help people, that is amazing. That is so amazing. If we can empower this group of people and help them be financially secure, help them to increase their wealth, increase their value, And if we can get money into your pockets, imagine the possibilities, you guys. Imagine the change possible if we are able to learn these skills and get more money. Money is not a bad thing. Money is freedom. Money emphasizes the person that you are. So for the longest time, I grew up in and I'll go into my personal story a little bit later but I didn't grow up rich I I still don't really have a middle class I would say um not rich not poor but I grew up close to poor and I had all these judgments about rich people or people who who had significantly more money than I did And I had these stereotypes about them that I'm not proud of, but let's keep it real. I did. I had stereotypes. I thought they were greedy and selfish and cold-hearted, but 
That's not true at all. Money only emphasizes who you are. So if you're a good person and you have money, you're going to do really great things with that money. You're going to help people. You're going to start a business to help people. You're going to donate your money and your profits to help people. You're going to do amazing things. You can even influence policy for the better. You can do amazing things. And I believe that that is what social workers are capable of. And we're really being underutilized in that way. So my plan, I'm super duper excited for this. So I want you to kind of know what to expect with this podcast. We're going to be talking to social workers who are in the field, all kinds of people. So from micro to macro, social workers, everybody. I, everyone in from traditional therapy roles to people doing non-traditional social work to entrepreneurs, everybody. We're going to talk about current events, things that happen to come up that we need to talk about that impact social workers, the world, our clients, everything. I hope to give you some practical tips and techniques that you can use for your practice to make you a better a better social worker and just a better person in general. Also, you can be expecting me to go on some rants and have occasional moderate cussing. So I hope you're okay with that. Just be prepared. I am forewarning you. Sometimes you just need to be like, what the fuck is happening? For emphasis. There's no other way. There's no other way. For emphasis. But don't worry. I'll keep it to a minimum. No worries. But just let you know, it's my podcast. So I'm going to be me. So I just want you to be better version of yourselves. And I'm hoping to make you more of badass social workers. So a little bit about me. I, I'm in Southern California. I am an LCSW, so licensed clinical social worker. And I listen to other podcasts and I'm always wondering, where are these people? Because there's so many different letters associated with social workers uh, that I just felt and they need to clarify. So California, LCSW, um, licensed clinical social worker. So I currently work in health and my specialty is older adults and caregivers in hospice and palliative care, which I absolutely love. It's one of my passions. And my background really set me up for this work and really made me a social worker. I mean, I've just, I've, I was born and raised to do this work. So I was raised by my grandmother. She raised me since I was two. My parents struggled with addiction, so they were not in a place to raise a baby. So my grandmother, God rest her soul, she is just amazing. She is one of the best human beings I've ever met. She raised me, and and so that experience really set me up to work with older adults. I learned a lot of nuances that you don't really learn when growing up with a younger parent. So things like the importance of large fonts or patience. So she she would drive so slow and it would drive me insane. Because as a teenager, I'm just like, ah, let's go, let's just get there. But she She was so sweet. She would drive so slow. But there was a reason for it. And it's so she didn't hit anything. I cannot tell you. She was so sweet. I cannot tell you how many curbs she ran over, how many times she knocked her mirror off her car. So (laughs) her driving slow was like for people's safety. So next time you see somebody driving very slow, 
please just try to be patient with them because it might be for everybody's safety that they're driving slow. So don't give them a hard time and don't honk your horn. Just be, try to be patient. And so I was raised by her and it did teach me a lot about also health issues that older adults experience and live with things like arthritis and diabetes, kidney failure, stroke, uh, alcoholism, depression. So a lot of these things I learned, I learned a lot and it really prepared me for the work that I do now and it gave me a greater level of empathy that I would not have otherwise. The other two events that significantly shaped me, uh, one was the old fire in 2003. So you all know California, we have a lot of wildfires. I mean, there's, we have wildfire season, like it just happens all the time. So 2003, the old fire in San Bernardino, my home burned down and it was very, it was devastating. I was traumatized. I still have a little PTSD from it, but it taught me the power of generosity. So after the fire, I was 15 years old in high school. Like it was, it was really a difficult time, but that is when strangers would offer help and they came to help. They, they gave us money. They gave me clothes. They gave me blankets. They helped me feel like a person again, even nail polish. Oh my gosh. So I didn't have any more clothes. And so all of the money of course was spent on necessities. So, so clothes, toothbrush, brushes, shoes, socks, undies, everything like that that a teenager needs and my grandmother was on a fixed income so it's not like we had a whole slew of cash just able to repurchase all of our basic necessities at one time so people would give us money and that would be spent on basic necessities and somebody somebody gave me nail polish and oh my gosh it's the smallest thing but as a teenager getting nail polish it just made me feel human again. It made me feel more like me. And I still remember, what is it like years later, the power that these strangers kindness had on my life and my functioning and my sense of hope and dignity. So after that, I was like, well, it's it. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to help people. And that's what I did obviously, because <laughs> here I am now. So I'm grateful for that experience because it really taught me the power of generosity and just the impact that the smallest things can make on someone's life. The other big thing was, um, so as after college, as an adult, my parents you know, God bless them. They have been clean for a long time, many, many years. So my mom ended up getting clean and she has been clean now for about 21 years. So she is spectacular. She's the most amazing, inspirational and kind hearted woman you will ever meet. I just, I cannot rave enough about my mom. She's so sweet. And so we have a good relationship now. My father, we really struggled to form a relationship and we had different points of views, different beliefs, things that we could not compromise on. Like the fact that he identified as or with, I'm not even sure how you phrase it, with the Aryan race theory. So I, th- I think he believed he was part of the Aryan race, which if you're not familiar it is a a theory or a belief that people from European descent are somehow superior or superior race biologically to other races. And we should not mingle 
(laughs) or intermingle with other races because it would destroy the superior race, which I know y'all, y'all social workers, like, (laughs) I just could not, I could not. So he found out I was dating a black man and he sent me all this information on Aryan race theory. And I, I open it in the mail and I'm, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm sorry. There is no other way to put it. I was massively offended that he would send this shit to me. And so I called him and he was, he was just so caught up. He was so surprised that I was offended. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I just, I just wanted to inform you. So he legitimately believed this and he legitimately thought he was doing me a favor by sending me this crap. So that obviously put a wrench in our ability (laughs) to form relationships because I ended up marrying this man and my husband, he is just, he's just the best. I just glow every time I talk about him. He is just so amazing. And he's, so he's black and they, you know, they never really got to know each other. And since, you know, I got pregnant and I had my baby, it really, it really threw a wrench in the ability to have a relationship with my father. Like he didn't go to my wedding. He didn't inquire about the baby at all during my pregnancy. He never even met his grandchild. And unfortunately he passed away. So there wasn't that ability to have that relationship, which I feel like I kind of got the easy way out because I didn't have to have this conversation with my daughter about her grandpa and why we don't visit with grandpa. So that's kind of, you know, the main events that have shaped me into the person that I am. So I'm very passionate about older adults, about caregivers who care for their older adults. I I'm passionate about racial justice and political advocacy and and medical social work. Um, ultimately, I believe that God has put all of these things in my life for a reason to get me where I am. And I'm just super excited. I'm very excited for 2020 and what it has to bring. So thank you so much for listening. I will be on here. I'm going, my goal is to do an episode every week. So stay tuned. There's a lot of fun planned. And if you don't mind, leave me a review on iTunes or wherever you are listening to your podcast. It just helps other people find this podcast easier. And you can also find me on Instagram at Cat Moore. And that's all I have for you today. Take care. Bye.